Hi again! My name is Beatrice Gilbert, and as you probably know by now, I'm a third year student in the business program at Cégep Champlain St. Lawrence. The goal of this project is to show you how Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Access are increasing productivity in daily business activities. At the start of this project, I knew very little about our, our world's technologies. It has been proven that we know next to nothing about the tools that we can use to render our work easier. How many times have I said during an accounting project that it was too long and inefficient? The answer is probably too many times. <laughs> But I'm not alone. A lot of professionals do not even know how to use properly the functions ma made available by Excel. Although, Excel is not a simple data entry tool, but a very powerful brain machine that helps us automate our work. In this vi project video, as you can understand, we're going to evaluate how and with which functions can Excel help us work faster and better. As per last time, I invite you to all to go to my website and check out any information and to obtain the link to my Excel project. In this particular video, you're going to learn about further analyzing data, learning how to get complete data, and how to collaborate within Excel documents and projects. To start, I clearly recommend that you watch my last video, but if you're one busy gal, I can summarize a bit for you. Here, on my website, you can see the pre-order form and the newsletter, two projects that I have created for this task. The purpose of Both is to prove that Word can help us become more efficient and creative. Then, a link to my last video is given when you click here. After, I have created a blog for you to stay updated on my project and on news related to 3D printing, hemp, and the running shoe community. In future days and weeks, I will update the blog a lot as part of my midterm evaluation. Now, enough about the past. Let's talk about Excel. Module 8 is according to me the most important chapter in the book as it uses trend lines, pivot table, pivot charts, and slicers. In this module, you really get to see and evaluate the different methods of presenting and explaining information. You start with basic data and then learn about all of the different ways to present your data. Now you might say, what is the purpose of having different ways of presenting the same data? Well, with these options, you can choose to show certain information and choose to hide other. By choosing certain options, the data serves a different purpose. For example, if I enhance the difference in data between men and women, I'm showing the disproportion between the two, as if I'm mixing both data together to separate the data, for example, by city, then I'm no longer showing genre-related data. As our teacher said, Not talking about the benefits of pivot table and pivot charts would be a huge mistake. With these features, you get instant insights about your data. It is truly user-friendly as it summarizes the data for, for you, and it becomes way easier to read and understand. Then, you can also add groups and calculate automatically, automatically the sums, averages, and counts of all group data. When the pivot table is done, or at the same time, you can create a pivot chart. This type of chart really allows you to select the data that you want to show primar primarily and enables you, like with all of the other Excel charts, to select the presentation mode of the chart. To conclude this chapter, let me show you what I've created based on the tools that, I, that we have used and learned throughout Module 8. All of my modules are in the same Excel document in order to have more space for other tab tabs on my website. In the document, except on tab 1 that relates to module 11, um, you can locate the part that relates to module 8 and 9. I have included on the first tab the data. In this case, I'm presenting the data concerning Nike's revenues from the last few years. After. I have created a tab to include a pivot table and the pivot chart, summarizing Nike's 2017 to 2020 revenue. Then, on the next tab, I have included a box and whisker. On this tab, you can clearly see the trend line over the years related to the revenues. 
you may know that all the data used are real and that the sources are located on the last tab of the linked Excel document. You can download it for further reference on my website. For module 9, bear with me, the explanation will be shorter. The purpose of this module is to solve data-related problems with the goal-seeking functions and with the solver function, to circle invalid data in a worksheet, to create scenario summary reports and pivot table with the scenario manager. Then, big surprise, we were shown how to use the draw tab to manually circle and highlight data. The summary reports are shown in my project as the pivot table and the pivot chart. To be fair, the main purpose of this chapter isn't all about colors and drawings, but rather about the data itself. We learned that a user can simply ask Excel to find what data would need a chart to end up to the one in number. Isn't it fascinating? Okay, maybe I'm the only one thinking that, but let's move on. Then, Excel allows you to type any data that you want, but in many ways, you may be wrong according to the formula or the needs that you have input. It is efficient to have Excel be able to circle the missing or invalid data so you can make the changes automatically or manually. Then for module 11, the importance was put on collaboration and formatting. The themes evaluated in this module are comments, collaborations, creating and saving custom schemes, compare workbooks, format worksheet backgrounds, and enhance charts with sparklines. In order to see if the collabor collaboration function of Excel is really fulfilling its destiny, let's compare it with Google Sheets. Let's be honest, we all use Google Sheets if we have to work in teams or even if only two people have to have access to the given information. Excel still has to work to do if it wants to make collaboration simpler. An idea just like that on the top of my head would be to have a website where many people could gain access to the files. As of right now, yes, Excel allows you to collaborate with work coworkers and other students, but it is nowhere as efficient as Google Sheets. Although, if we give credit to Microsoft, they are truly trying to make some progress. And yes, even if Google Sheets enable enables us to work better in Teams, the software will probably never be as complete as Excel. Also, in Module 11, we see some formatting functions that help us work better. Custom schemes are helpful whenever a company has specific marketing colors that they want to use in its presentation and documents. And they don't want to have to create the same colors and Teams again and again, so the user can save it on its computer and use it later on on documents. After, comparing workbooks is something that I never thought would be useful, but it really helps you to see the difference in the documents. In other modules, we even learn to compress two similar documents together when they have been compared previously. After, let's not forget about colors. Colors are what keeps the eye awake, which brings me to talk about backgrounds. Backgrounds are something that brings change in Excel. We always think of the software as a blank page with gray lines. Pretty boring, I know. But little did we know that we can actually add complete images to the background to give the document some life and energy. If we take a quick look to my Excel document to show you guys what I created out of what I learned in this module, you can look at tab one. Tab one is named favorite brand per generation and it analyzes real-life data. I have found on the web recent survey data on the favorite running shoe brand according to people's age. Then, I group age to separate them according to generations, such as millennials and baby boomers. At the right-hand side of the data, you can clearly see the spark lines that shows the trend line. The spark line is used to put emphasis on the data. So here, I'm really trying to show that, for example, if we take ASICs or Hoka One One that are running shoe brands that they become more popular popular as the clientele ages. After, I have added colorful background to make the presentation more enjoyable. The last thing that I added is the start of a discussion. Indeed, I have left a comment for a colleague to respond to. 
This shows collaboration in my, in my workbook. All right, now that we have evaluated three of Excel's module, we can really say that we are becoming experts. Well, for my part, I can say that after three courses and long hours spent on projects, that I knew how to use Excel better than I did before. I certainly didn't think that I could do so much with what I thought was a simple data entry software. I used to believe that Excel was simply about sums and averages. When someone would ask me if I, if I was Excel fluent, I would answer yes while being proud. Oof, now I understand that I was really a novice. Now that my two projects related to Word and Excel are done, you can go on my website and find the Excel project to which I have related to during all of this video. You can also find a history related explanation of Excel next to words. On the blog, you can also find three written explanation of all of the modules to which I have related to in this video, in case you're more of a visual person. In this case, I think that I successfully proved that Excel's and Excel enables us to work better, more efficient, efficiently and more creatively. A company that has good Excel knowledge and that is able to make more out of it is better off than one that isn't. As I conclude the project on Excel, let me say that I'm eager to present what I think of PowerPoint and Excel.